Hi and uh, welcome to our program. Today we are visiting the exhibition Bodies here at Mosgard Museum. Anthropology students made this exhibition from scratch in only five weeks. Let's talk to two of those students. Hi Magnus. Hello. Thank you so much for having us. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm good also. Excited to right. know a little bit more about this exhibition, which is called Bodies, right? Yes, exactly. So six, what is it about? Uh, it's six, six perspectives on bodies, mm -hmm. uh, six different ways of exploring how the body can uh, function and operate uh, within anthropology. Uh, okay. Its framework is the anthropological um, theories and methods. And those are the ones that we use to uh, do our field work and then also collaborate with our in informants and uh, co-workers to create this exhibition. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a student's exhibition, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, how many students were involved? I think around 70 people were involved with it, uh, all studying okay. anthropology on the fourth semester. Okay, okay. And uh, what was the time frame? For, for this, this was a course, right? Yes, it was. The time frame was five weeks. Uh, okay. Two weeks preparation where you had to do the field work and brainstorming of ideas, and then three work weeks where you had to create the whole exhibition where we had the room and you could work in here and mm -hmm. create cutouts for your uh, exhibition. You could put up your uh, items, you could hang uh, these walls. No, okay. And how was this uh, organized? So there were 70 students and there's uh, six um, topics? Yes. So people were in groups, right? Yes, exactly. There were around 12 people in each group. Uh, some more, uh, not more, some less. Mm -hmm. um, our, uh, we had professors and lecturers, uh, okay. organizers, along with some employees here at the museum. Mm -hmm. um, they presented a topic for us, uh, which was bodies, and then okay. we had to brainstorm on ideas that you could mm. explore the bodies with. Okay, so that was already decided from yes. the beginning. You could not uh, uh, choose the, the broad topic. No, you could okay. not. But you could, could only choose the approach. Yes, exactly. Okay. And the approach was uh, individually voted on by everyone. Uh, I think there were originally 12 <clears throat> different ideas, and then we had to minimize it to six ideas. Mm. And okay. from those six ideas, you had to um, sign up for them because there were so many people on one topic and less yeah. people on another. And then you had to rotate the people around. Okay. Okay. So everything besides the <coughs> bodies topic itself uh, was chosen by by the students. Yes. There exactly. was no type of uh, guidelines or anything like this. No. It only had to be able to be explored through anthropology. Okay. Okay. What did you come up with at the uh, beginning? Did you suggest uh, at something? The beginning, or? I, think, I think we were pretty steadfast on drag performance in the beginning, okay. uh, which was also the idea that we ended up going with. Um, some groups were talking about uh, how disabled bodies uh, could use, um, mm. for an example, prostheses, uh, okay. and then how the body operated with this prosthesis. Prosthesis. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Yeah, I'm actually I'm not sure. Pro right. Processes? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think I've ever said this in English, no. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, but I understand. Yes. Um, there were also talks about uh, the political battlefield, how the body okay. is used for political purposes and gains, which actually evolved into um, the activism group. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, were there any other ideas that you're kind of sad that uh, it was not explored or that you would like to explore, like have time or another project that you think it would be really worth it? Mm, personally, I would love to explore drag more because I think it's a very broad subject and it's also mm -hmm. uh, the pr perspectives that you have in the general media around Denmark is how drag is hard and how drag is uh, stigmatizing where we want to focus on the positive aspects of drag, yeah. um, how the bodily um, performance enhances like, your movement, your vision, your like, the whole creative process behind drag. Um, and we would like to kind of expand that in the future. Okay, so this was like a small taste. It was yes. not uh, yes. enough. We're okay. currently trying to figure out if there is a way for us to expand the exhibition in Aww. any capacity. 
Okay, like to do it another time with yeah, the, another, another to type do it of at resources. Another place, actually. Okay. Uh, we're trying to uh, negotiate with different museums around the country. Ah, that's really cool. Is it yeah. the whole exhibition or no, is it uh, uh, just, just ours. A, Okay. Okay, and then your your goal would be uh, to dive deeper into the exactly. into the topic and have more time and perhaps a bigger budget. Yeah. Okay, because <laughs> your be budget nice. was our budget was only two thousand. Yeah. Per per group, group yes. right? Okay. Can you say again what which were the topics? So there were six groups. There right? were six groups. Uh, there was the first group is ballet. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is activism. Mm -hmm. The third one is just a body, just a human. The fourth one is embodied loss, and the fifth one is drag performance. The sixth one is microplastics in the body. Yeah. And when you started this project, did you have any idea that uh, with those five weeks, you would be like craving more, kind of more information, and to go? No, uh, I think it was uh, along the way that we sort of realized that oh, we can do so much more with this. Um, okay. But we don't have the time. We don't have the money. We don't have. Yeah. the resources to do it and we mm -hmm. also don't have the space it's a yeah. cramped space in here because yeah. everyone had to have their exhibition fit into the hole mm -hmm. and then some had smaller rooms some had bigger rooms yeah uh, we had one of the smallest actually mm -hmm. okay and how, how did that work out actually like how did you decide how much space or which part of the room each group uh, kept uh, was it a, like was this some kind of vote? Was it like through talking and negotiating? Yeah. Like how, how how was it like working in between the groups? We were eleven curators, which were uh, two representatives from each group, except for mm -hmm. activism that only had one act, okay. uh, curator. Um, we met every morning from I think eight to nine, or maybe it was nine to ten, and then okay. had a debriefing meeting. And then the first two weeks we had to meet every day for six hours and then we had to negotiate every how... day for six hours yes exactly oh, okay it was a negotiating process of how the room was going to be built okay. uh, how the walls were going to be set up because at first we didn't actually have these free moving mm. uh, walls as an idea we had okay uh, sort of these string curtains around the mm. room um, okay. and then it was all a process of like how things would play into each other uh, if there was a, a symbiosis between like, walking from one okay. exhibition to another, uh, how the objects... Um, like we, have an, we have a table in our exhibition that has these very bright bulbs. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had to negotiate with the other group because they thought it was giving too much light into their uh, exhibition, mm. so we had to turn it around. Okay. Yeah, so okay. it was very much a process of talking and yeah. negotiating with each other. Okay, yeah, that sounds extremely intense. Was yeah. there, a, was it just you, like the curators, or was there like a professor there in was, there? There was a professional um, exhibition architect we ah, had from uh, that is quite Austria. Nice. Yeah. Oh. yeah, she was uh, from Austria. Um, she, I think she did exhibitions at a children's museum in Austria. Okay. Uh, she was the main person that we had to go to with everything, right? Okay. For materials and everything else that had to be bought, uh, we had to take uh, her into consideration, talk to her about uh, what kind of materials we were going to be using and what it could be used for. And then okay. she would also draw, for an example, if you had to build something, she would draw these small okay. drawings of them with uh, mm -hmm. height and uh, width and mm -hmm. depth. So okay. you had to, you had a, a, a kind of a sketch to build your items from. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm oh, sorry, because uh, a lot of these items are actually made by us, mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna show you some of them uh, mm -hmm. when we're gonna go around. Okay, like for instance, the... Yes, these were okay. hand um, cut by the students. Okay. Um, and this is a lot of things to do in yes. five weeks. This yes, is crazy. Exactly. Did you have any type of uh, preparation? Like, uh, um, did this person, like, I don't know, give some talks or um, like an introduction how to do things? Did you have courses before that prepared you for this? Or it was just like, yeah, this is it, you have five weeks. The only preparation that we had beforehand was the methodology courses we've had throughout mm -hmm. our education. Uh, during the course about uh, the exhibition, we had small um, kind of a seminar about how you, okay. for an example, use a saw 
to cut out these again okay. electric ah, so it was like the practical things already. yes exactly mm. um, most of them most of the uh, curiosities that we had uh, had to be brought up to the curators and then they would mm -hmm. uh, have to take contact to our uh, exhibition architect who would then help us uh, find how to um, do these things yeah, for example how to build a table or how to yeah. put up um, uh, like uh, mm, this uh, hangers yes thingies. exactly yeah well that is quite yeah something uh, so you were you you were saying that you were a curator right yes so which inside so there were the groups itself like the topic groups and then there was other roles right yes. inside that so exactly. what were the, the roles there were four different genre groups uh one was text which were, uh, were the people in charge of writing the introductory mm -hmm. texts. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so like for, for yeah, this? for example, um, these are object texts or uh, okay, like a term texts. So okay. they explain what's going on, how the objects relate to each other, and how okay. it relates to the topic as a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the text groups also did subtitles for videos. Okay. Um, another genre group was the sound group, which did the soundscape that you're hearing around yeah. the exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, they were also in charge of these sound bites that you hear through the different uh, pods and headphones that you find around the exhibition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, another genre group was the video groups. Um, they were also in charge of the pictures, and uh, okay. they were the ones in charge of um, filming and taking pictures and editing, uh, editing and everything. making sure everything fit together perfectly. Okay. And then the fourth group was the objects group. Uh, they were in charge of collecting these items, making sure every document is signed uh, for these items, making sure they get in the freezer. Mm -hmm. um, every item had to be frozen for, I think, three days before they could enter the museum. What? Yeah, because uh, otherwise you might get pests like um, I have never heard this in my life. Like you might what? get a moth in, okay. which could ruin the artifacts in the other yeah. exhibitions. Okay, it does make sense, yeah. but my brain never made the connection before. Right. This sounds super weird. Yeah. So everything had to be frozen. Yeah, except for uh, items that were bought from new. Okay. Uh, so like these materials did not have to be frozen, but everything that you're okay. seeing hanging around the room, everything that you see, so um, weird. you know, <laughs> Yeah, in a glass box also had to be frozen, which okay. kind of was a difficult challenge for some, because some of their items were not able to, to withstand the, 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 ah, the frozen, okay, okay. Uh, the very, very, very low degrees. I think it was minus 36. Okay. I'm not sure. How, how did you pull that off? Can you do that in a freezer at home? Uh, there's a big freezer here at the museum ah, that here. we had to okay. use. And then there was okay. another person in charge of making sure every item went into the freezer and went out in the correct time. Because okay. uh, the whole museum uses this freezer. <laughs> yeah. That is like a very complex thing. It's like five weeks. Like I cannot yeah. uh, wrap my head around, around that. Well, okay. That sounds intense. But what was also the the goal of this of this course. Why did you have a, a course on, in making a, an exhibition? Uh, the goal of the course was to make sure that we knew how to formulate um, a thesis and then present it to the public and make it more understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, make okay. uh, making anthropology accessible to people who aren't in the research field, who aren't necessarily university students. Uh, making sure that anthropology gets across to the public mm -hmm. common knowledge so that it okay. is more accessible for people who are not in the academic field. Okay. Um, and then the main goal of the prospective bodies was to make sure that anthropology can communicate how we work with bodies um, to everyone and make okay. sure that people know that anthropology is not just about studying primitive uh, cultures or mm -hmm. other cultures that are around the world. Uh, we don't really use the word primitive. I, that was a mistake on my part. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no problem. Okay. Yeah. That is that is quite nice. Yeah. Um, is there anything you would like to add about this um, this first view kind of of, uh, of the exhibition and and the process um, itself? What was your biggest challenge actually? Um. I think our biggest challenge was 
communicating with the group uh, mm -hmm. as a whole because we are 70 people who all have wishes and needs yeah. and then it's a process of negotiating with everyone making sure everyone has at least some of their needs and hopes met mm -hmm. um, which was very difficult at times because yeah. some people wanted bigger rooms some people wanted um, a light dimmed in one place and then you couldn't see what was on the other side of the wall because the light has been dimmed okay. um, so definitely working together as a whole group uh, trying to formulate how uh, how we're gonna envision this whole exhibition together yeah yes. it, it's like the first time for everyone to yeah. do it so double challenge yes there. exactly but, um, okay um, shall we start going sure, around yeah. then? All right. Okay. So we're in this activism group. We're part. in the activism group right now. Yeah. Uh, they did field work uh, around the country, mm -hmm. uh, primarily in Copenhagen with Extinction Rebellion. Uh -huh. Okay. So you could actually go really broad if, yes. you, if you wanted. Yes. Uh, we also went to Copenhagen in our group. Uh, mm -hmm. This group went to Copenhagen to do a field work with an action, uh, which is like. Um, it consists like of a few people uh, who are doing like uh, a protest of no. sorts. Like you mm -hmm. can, maybe you've seen people standing on an ice cube with a noose around their neck, and then it's a, okay. it's a, it's a critique of the complacency from politicians doing okay. nothing about climate change. And then, but as the ice melts, they're going to get hanged. Okay, um, that is quite extreme. Yeah, that is an action. Those are the things that they've explore okay um they've also in copenhagen yeah but i mean yeah not yeah, only for an example, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they didn't necessarily do that one okay but they've um done field work about this which is called a lock-on so this is where you sit down put your okay. arm in and then you lock uh arms with this one are you touching yeah each other um, yeah okay. and then <laughs> you're locked in and then you can um Oh, Jim. You can make a, a blockade in front of like a door. Okay. And the way they've made this um, interactive is when you put your arm in here. Uh, oh, it's here. Oh. All right. Or, okay, oh. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you put your arm in, it activates the sound in this one, okay. which is talking about what this is, uh, which is a lock on. Okay. And this also, like covering this uh, events, also led to that image. Yes. Th those those videos, right? Or was yes. it from archives? Or uh, some of them are from archives. Uh, a lot of them are, uh, I think, they're interviews they did with mm -hmm. their informants. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. In the corner, you can see when it's archival ah, material. Ah. Okay. 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 And this was in in several parts, right? This is like a the overall um, vision of the group on, on this, the, the video part at least. Yeah, yeah, um, about how you use your body to stand in solidarity with each other, um, how you activate a special feeling which is actually called communitas. Communitas. It's, yeah, it is an anthropological term. Mm, um, okay. There's a description mm, of mm -hmm. over here. It says, if you ever have tried standing at a concert or football match, then you may know the feeling of many bodies becoming one. The people standing next to you may be different in appearance, occupation or age, but all this dissolves in large crowds with a com common attitude. It is a special connection of equality and community, and sometimes a sense of power. It is a, it is a term that we use a lot in anthropology, Aww. which is a nice way of describing that feeling, you know. Yeah, I had <laughs> felt this before, but yeah. I didn't know there was, I mean, makes sense that there's yeah. a name for this, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I never heard the, um, the term either, the yeah. concept. Yeah, this is quite nice. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, okay. it's another way of describing like, collective effervescence, mm -hmm. which is also a term in religion, where it's like when you have a mass, uh, you feel this sense of community, yeah. which is also like, one of the main things that you study with anthropology. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, quite interesting. And then they had this uh, this different people represented. Sorry. Did they have this different like people represented, yes. bodies represented? Yes, exactly. Uh, do you happen to know uh, something about like why? Was uh, there so this tea is here? Uh, when you go on uh, a hunger strike. 
Uh, then you have okay. to uh, take electrolytes and also have some herbal tea in order for you to not uh, completely dehydrate or okay. go like insane because you're hungry. Okay. Okay. So you have to take some electrolytes. Mm -hmm. um, a hunger strike is when you uh, protest, uh, usually in front of an important uh, building mm -hmm. uh, where you have a message and you won't go away before they've listened to your message and you won't eat until they've listened to your message. So you kind of put them in a spot where they're responsible for your death if you don't eat. It's a very extreme form yeah, of so extreme. activism. Damn. Yeah, but there's so many things that you can actually like do mm -hmm. with your. But there was this campaign with, uh, was it against Lush? I don't remember of someone that was um, like in a, um, how do you call it? They were like a, they were not exp in exposing themselves, kind of like in the shop, like in the glass window. Yeah. They were like going through experiments, kind of like they were doing the experiments on a person as they would do in. A, yeah. um, in a, like, in a uh, lab rat, like yeah. just to, to raise awareness about that. And uh, yeah, because when I thought about this activism, like using your, your body to do activism, I didn't really, uh, nothing really came to my, to my mind. And now I just remember that, which was also ex yeah. like super, super extreme, but I think it's so efficient because it's, it really, it really touches you, yeah. you know? You see like that reality in a body that you have, like it could be you. Uh, one thing is to just to see something happening to, to that, uh, I don't know, to that lab rat or something. Yeah. That is something that you cannot really relate to yeah, as it, long as other person. It forces uh, a confrontation of sorts. Mm -hmm. You have to do, you know, you have to reflect on what you're seeing because it's so extreme. But it's yeah. also very effective in that way mm -hmm. because it makes you think about, uh, for example, climate change. When you see people mm -hmm. getting hanged yeah. because the ice is melting. Yeah. Yeah, that is, yeah, it's literally putting that into, into a very visual yeah. and relatable uh, context. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Do they have uh, other, um, like, so this is hunger strike, right? Yeah. Do they have other forms uh, spread around? Um, I'm actually not sure. Okay. There's uh, civil disobedience. Mm. Um, that's basically, okay. uh, it encompasses everything that's like, for example, the lock on, the yeah. hunger strike. Okay. Okay, so it's like the general yes. um, term kind of civil yeah. disobedience. Okay, nice. Is there something else that you would like to add from, um, from this part? In the corner here, mm -hmm. there is uh, a disabled uh, guy called Jesper who's writing poems about uh, how disabled people don't ever have sex. Um, and he has a message with these poems where he he wants to get out that a disabled body also has needs. Mm. It's not necessarily uh, a static or a, or a non-needing body. It also has these different types of needs they need to have met. Um, mm. And he writes poems about how no one really seems to empathize with him or want to. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Jesper has cerebral palsy uh, okay. and expresses his activism through a computer where he uses his eyes to talk. Uh, so it's oh. um, an eye tracking movement which uh, goes from a letter to another letter. Mm -hmm. So in this video, he's uh, reading his poems with, uh, with his computer. Ah, he's reading with yeah, his Yeah, yeah, aloud. Because then a robot, a robot voice will read it aloud. Okay, when, yeah. while he writes or he can just... Um, uh, both when he writes or when he reads it out. Because mm. uh, he can choose, I think he can choose an option where it's, it's read aloud. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's so sad. That's really sad. But yeah, it is also a very important uh, a topic that yeah. it's not really, it's not really uh, talked uh, It's never really talked about. about. And he's uh, he's 25. He's 25 right? years old. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know what to react to this. Yeah. And this this whole corner is is uh, is dedicated is for him. to him. Yes, okay. exactly. Some of his poems are here, and then over here is the general description of him. Mm -hmm. He uses a Toby computer to, uh, okay. to communicate. Yeah, and those 
that is quite expensive, no? How is, does that type of um, tool, does it need to come from a private, uh, like, do, did, there, did his parents or him or whoever needed to, talk, to pay for it, or uh, is there some type of support from I'm, the government? I'm not sure. I would, okay. I would hope there is some yeah. sort of uh, support from the government, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Mm, this is really sad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, besides, like, it says that it takes a lot of practice, quality yeah. control and patience. Yeah, besides the, all the things, like, the, the thing that they can do, it's... It's incredible. Yeah. And it's very precise. Yeah, then. Technology. Mm -hmm. So and this is uh, one of the um, one of the poems. Yes, exactly. And it's um. Yeah, it's, it's only in English, English. Uh, in Danish. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Poetry shouldn't be uh, translated. And these are pictures from him. Right? These are uh, pictures of him and his body. Okay. And uh, do you happen to know how the group uh, found him? Um, is he uh, like I don't know active in social media or did they? Um, I think he's active on social media. I think he posts his poems there, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Okay. Uh, I might be Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. But I would okay. think they found him through social media. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense if it's if it's an activist an activist yeah. and wants to spread the word, you need to kind of yeah, have some might, type of exposure. There might be a, an activist network that yeah. would hook them up with him. Okay. Yeah, because this is crazy. Like in five weeks to contact all these people, yeah. fi like finding and contacting them, them being free, you being able to go there. Yeah. This is insane. That was it for this program, but stay tuned for the next one. In the meantime, don't forget to check our Facebook page, BERT, for updates on our schedules and programs. See you soon.